Hello everybody, Dr. Jake Alec from Alec Payne to Performance. In this episode, we're with Cam Galgano, owner of GPS Training, and we're gonna talk about all things group-based training. Cam, your facility's all based on group-based training, mm. I'd say 90% of it. Yeah. Why at your specific level of athletes, grade school, mm -hmm. high school, college, maybe some professional, why is group-based training so crucial for how you implement your system? You know, we talked about earlier um, how a lot of athletes require a lot of the same things. We found that for majority of, you know, your high school, junior high, even higher level athletes, they all need to get strong. They all need to get more explosive. They all will be able to run and move better. Um, and the biggest thing I would say or the biggest advantage to group-based training is just the environment it creates. A lot of athletes, I mean, they all want to compete. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to be able to do, let's just say, speed training in that one-on-one -on -one environment and really push yourself. Mm -hmm. So what we found is you get, you know, a bunch of athletes of similar skill levels, similar, um, you know, athletic capabilities. You get them in that same session. You get the laser timers out, for instance. And then really the quality of training, it skyrockets because they all obviously want to try and beat each other, one-up each other. Mm -hmm. And then the energy goes up and just the overall quality goes through the roof when it comes to the overall training session. We found that too with even younger athletes too. It's just more fun. And that's honestly, at the end of the day, that's what I want our training to be is yeah. I want kids to want to come to the gym. And well, if it's more fun, the, the chance of them coming back are going to increase. 1000%. And a lot of times you see at that age, the training doesn't have to be the most marvelous looking thing no. where it's the, the best program in the world. A lot of times when it's that age of that grade school, high school, it's just making sure they keep showing up. For sure. Right? Compliance is huge. Right. So between the strength training, not looking like the, the, the most Instagram, yeah. really fashion, you know, flashy style. For sure. But the fact that that's someone that's showing up every Tuesday and Thursday mm -hmm. or three times a week that allows that competitive edge to keep showing yeah. up. And that's another thing too. So we used to, you know, back in the day, every athlete, you know, and we still differentiate our college athletes are doing a different strength program than high school and junior high and so on and so forth. But you can have the best program on paper. And I've learned, you know, I said, I love, I love all the kids, but sometimes they can all, you can, you know, you get headaches from them and you get the best program on paper, but that doesn't mean they're going to do it right. Right. Because they can look at a certain exercise and be either like, what is that? Or I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So we've learned to really kind of meet the athletes, essentially almost where they are and make it more instructional based and focusing on the basics and doing them well. Yep. Well, and that's just like you hit on the head. Even when we utilize our team training with mm -hmm. the high schools, it's more like when you look at the paper, you're like, there's not much is getting done here, yeah. but it's the meat and potatoes sure. that is needed for that sport. And then more of the intricacies can yeah. be done on an individual basis where you, I'm sure you have people that come to you that's like, I really got to improve mm -hmm. this one thing specifically with my game. Yeah. Okay, we may have to do that individually. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But when it comes into the overall environment, just train, right? For sure. And that's where, and we look at it, it's like, okay, UFC, you have a 60 minute training session. We want to get the most important things on that 60 minutes. Now you have some super dedicated athletes who may come before, may come after. So they'll tell like, hey, I want to work on you know, my first few steps of a sprint. It's like, okay, hey, mm -hmm. you know, come this other day or come afterwards, we'll work on that. Yep. And obviously as a coach, that's the best thing to see because it really shows like, okay, you're super dedicated, you know what you want. Um, but during that main session, we want to make sure we're getting those big rocks covered. Yeah, perfect. Now, even when you see at like females versus males, mm -hmm. how do you blend the lines between are they both genders working out with each other? Mm -hmm. Are you doing a female specific only, male specific? Yeah. How, how have you seen that? You know, it's, it's really interesting because I found that female athletes, you know, with the demographic or the age group that I work with that 12, 13 to all the way up to 18 to 21, once they get into the program, they're probably like our most dedicated That's trainee. Awesome. It's awesome. One, they, they love it. They, um, you know, shout out Kelly who comes in here. Mm -hmm. Um, Kelly Rourke, she came to us, you know, super scrawny, and now, like, she's just, like, a gym rat. Yeah. Um, so we found that by introducing the program, you know, walking them through, you know, just the very basics, you kind of 
see them go into a few different ways. They could just be put their head down, go to work. Maybe they want to work out, you know, a little bit more off to the side. Or they, you could see girls that are jumping right in with the guys too. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have that baseline, that base level workout, and then we adjust it based off of you know what their needs are, and also a little bit more off of their personality type yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, and that's when you get to the whole country club style at your place, right? Oh yeah. my God, it's, it's ridiculous. And then the, you'll get the the 10 kids that show up 30 minutes before the workout, the chit chat. You could have, you know, five guys, five girls that are staying after. Again, it's, is it is it ideal? Sometimes not. Sometimes you want them to get out of there a little bit, but I really wanted to create an environment to where, you know, kids, they wanted to go to, they felt comfortable, they have fun, um, and they also get work done. And I think we've we've done a good job with that. I think by training in groups, we've been able to develop a culture that allows us to do so. Perfect. Now, would you agree, based on the training age of an athlete, group base or let's just call it, based on the training age, the younger the training age, the more general the training can be. And then as you age on, so more of a, a a high-end college athlete that's maybe training for eight, 10 years mm -hmm. to a professional. Now those are the people that mean more of that individual work versus vice versa. For sure, for sure, yeah. I would say if you're a junior high athlete, you could literally perform almost like the same program for four to six weeks and continue making results every single session. Yep. Because like you said, it's everything's so new to you. It's such a new stimulus you're going to make improvements mm -hmm. super quickly. It could be super general, but as your training age increases, as your overall, I guess, all of your physical qualities mm -hmm. increase, that training definitely needs to be way more specific. Yep. And it's cool because, I mean, from my end, from the person who's, you know, developing the programming, it's more about coaching and, you know, the fundamentals at that younger age group. So where as you get older and their technique is pretty good, then you can get super fun with the program and you can do some of the things that you see on, you know, you see some people doing in social media, these things that may look super flashy or super sexy, those could be more applicable maybe to that advanced athlete. Got it. But they wouldn't be applicable to somebody who's just started. Yeah. yeah. So in, in general, what we can summarize is, one, don't judge a gym off of their social media, right? Yeah. Unless they have awesome Instagram stories like GPS does. Yeah. We got a, we got a new account to it. The old one got hacked. <laughs> So what's the new account? GPS.training.2018. Yeah. If GPS training 2018 follows anybody and sends a message, do not answer. Do not answer. All right. <laughs> so paired with the new account in group training wise, the biggest thing is motivation energy wise. When you're training with a group environment, it just allows everyone to have more of a rah-rah. I'm walking into a workout. I may not be as pumped up as now. I'm seeing someone from a different school. Yeah. One of my teammates getting after it, I'm naturally going to get after it. Mm -hmm. Two, depending on our, our age, the younger I am, the more applicable I am to group training, yeah. the less specific I need to be versus if I'm a little bit more experienced, I'm more specific to getting to those higher levels. I can benefit from more individual yeah. style things versus group. But in the end, group is always king. Oh, for sure. For sure. And it's just, like I said, there's something about enjoying the workout process, having some fun, because if you go in there and you're not, you know, maybe you go a whole 60 minutes, you're not talking to anybody. I mean, especially if you're a kid, are you really gonna wanna go back and train? Cause then you can always just go to a, a charter fitness, yeah. but it's it's that environment, that culture you're trying to create. It gets it gets stale when it's by yourself. For sure, all the time, right? for sure. So that's why whenever, you know, I have a chance to get a handful of buddies together, it's uh -huh. like, let's work out together, yeah. cause then you're always gonna pull the best out of everybody. Exactly. Awesome, exactly. all right. Cam Logano, owner of GPS Training, all things group training.